Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And the end is finally here for Heroes Jubilee. Now I'm going to take on Boss Battle 2, which you can see I've got a decent rank in. But this is not tied to the antagonist meta like we were using for Boss Battle 1. No, 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 no. This is tied to the random half meta banner for Octogram Demon Lord that came with the new Milim and the new guy who came out at the same time as the rest of the antagonist team. So they're really pushing for you to summon on both banners, and to that I say, uh, no, please don't do that, because they're only useful for this one specific stage. Uh, and two, I'm sorry. Like, I'm gonna show you the team with them, and I'm gonna show you, like, five or six other teams that I have recorded, and they all really suck. So, please use this video as just a building block. You're gonna have to make substitutions based on what you have available. Just use these teams to give you some ideas. But this is a single target fight versus Benny Maru, who is doing a lot of the things that the first stage did, but not the same. Cause here he's nerfing oranges. So no, no orange team for you now. Crit resistance has it, but you can synergy in this fight. So that opens up some buff area for you. On turn 5, he lowers your front line's attack by 15%, so whoever's up front is going to get hit with that nerf. 15% is not a lot, but it does take away from your total overall damage. And then he also has an 80-point seal at the end of turn 3, just like the first stage did. So you, if you're going to bring an 80-point unit, you got to use him on turn 3, or you're never going to use him again. So, you know, good luck. Um, try your best, use what you got, use one of these teams and throw a, a couple units in that I am use that I, that you don't, that you have that I am not using. Uh, just, you know, give it a good old college try and then you never have to do it again. All right, my highest scoring team looks like this. We've got new guy, we've got new Isis, we've got new Shinsha, we've got Exalted Champion guy because we can synergy in this fight, and the new Milim is on Exalted Champions, and she's single target, and then we've once again brought big time Visions of Coleus Violet for that 80 point buff that we're gonna have to use early, otherwise it gets sealed. So we are starting with Space Milim up front so we can use the new Milim's Rainbow Convert turn one we do have three demon, well, actually, no. We have two demon lord characters here, but only the first two slots need to be converted, so we're going to bank off of four rainbows and two Shinsha orbs, essentially. So, guys in slot two, we'll bring in Milim in slot one, we'll use her rainbow convert and her pierce skill, because it's, it's free, and we're going to, she's going to be able to hold it in the back when we're ready to nuke. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Shinsha orbs don't really matter that much. Not sending a full rainbow hand is kind of unfortunate, but it, it'll work out. So here, we've got 103 points because Guy gives us 30. And then we could either use his convert, or we can use the rainbow convert again. Like, we could do really anything. The charm I'm running is alt gauge on green orbs, so we can ensure that we get a Milim EX alt here. And then we're going to use the alt rush skill for Guy, because it'll give him very close to an alt, plus these rainbow orbs will get him an EX alt. So now we have an EX alt for both him and Violet, or not him and Violet, but him and Milim, so we can use the Violet buff on turn three before it gets sealed on our two Exalted Champion units, and, well, Demon Lord units. So Attribute Unbound kicks in because Milim is an unbound character. It's now turn three, so we'll use a Synergy buff and the Magic buff, so we can hold both of those and send them away. And Violet is going to have extra power because she's got magic and synergy now. So this works out kind of good for our damage. We'll use Guy. He puts the resistance down on the enemy so we can hit a little bit harder. It puts the Lord's Ambition skill on us. So at the end of our turn, he can get 30% weakness resistance down. And we synergy nuke for 125k. Not a lot, but hey, it's more than what the other two characters are doing. So we send her last. And now we're just building up points, essentially, and we're killing off this next turn. So as long as you can get access to another guy for turn five, you're going to be looking pretty good. So we'll do this again. This is another three stacks of the weakness resistance down because of the Lord's Ambition skill. And if we can get alts for somebody, then great. And if you can't, well, that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. We get almost a Shinsha ult. Not super impactful because she's not going to be up front for this. 
because she's going to go away. Her buff skill does not matter for the back line. But there's the attack nerf right there, which the Lord's Ambition skill does negate. And also it does negate the 80 point seal if you're using it. But if you don't use Lord's Ambition, Violet would remain sealed. So you can see it's sealed right now, but if we were to use Guy, it would not be. But we're not going to use it again. So now we've used the alt buff from Shinsha, and now Guy can come in for Violet because we've used her buff already. And that leaves us with the debuff and the Drago skill for Isis. And then we have 50 extra skill points, which, I mean, we don't really need to use the synergy at all. But, oh well, we got points to kill, so why not? We'll apply this with resistance down. And now we will send Isis first, even though her we her weakness strike alt effect isn't gonna hit anybody. So we'll send Guy first, and then we'll send Milam's last. Guy does 1.2 million, you do 29,000, and Milam's alt does eleven and a half million. It's pretty nice right there. And then the follow-up orb 200 percent for Milam does 344k. So there is my highest score, 13.8. It does require a lot of new characters, but hey, it's the meta. And now we progress into our madness of not-so-great teams past this. Alright, I received this team from one of the Sweats, TM, and uh, it's, you know, the only other premium character with Lord's Ambition to get around that 80-point seal and the debuff and it's Commander Diablo. So we're gonna run a stacking team and pray that we can get a lot of Diablo orbs. So Renard is giving us extra damage against light enemies, so that checks out. He's stacking weakness strike and alt resistance down, which is gonna help our single target Diablo alt. We've got Glenda for the alt swap and the synergy rate and the physical resistance down. We've got Dark Benny Maru for his convert that has a 30% buff on it for all gauges and then his physical buff and alt resistance down. Shuna, because we have Diablo Shuna and Benimaru as three Tempest Elite characters, we can full convert with her if all three of them are up front, and she's got Pierce and Pierce Power for three turns, which we're going to want to Pierce here. Diablo has his Lord's Ambition skill. It gives him a 25% alt gauge for free, which helps us rush it, and then he's got his attack and synergy power big time buff. And then Shinsha, new character, gives Dark Allies 100% alt and pierce resistance down, which we're piercing with Shuna. Now, I do want to run the caveat, pretty big caveat, that one, we are running an alt gauge for our highest attacking character on Renard, which is going to be Diablo, so that's 16% alt gauge every single time we use Renard, and Diablo has a perfect 36% pierce power claw, which not, like, 99% of people are not going to have. I got really lucky on a reroll for him, so he's got extra 36%. So we're essentially doubling the buff that Shuna's giving. She's giving 30. So just keep that in mind when you see the damage on this team. Okay, so turn one, we've got four greens that we can do nothing about. So we're going to bring our two characters up front that have protection gains underneath them. Unfortunately, it's not enough to get us a protector on turn one, but we got very lucky and we can use Benny Maru's convert here turn two and be able to save Shuna's um, orb change, which is more expensive. And we can also use the Lord's Ambition to start alt rushing. It's actually 35% alt gauge. So here, we're looking pretty good. That's a lot of Diablo orbs. That's a lot of alt gauge for him. We're going to get an alt. We have a double protector on this turn, and we get another Benny Maru convert right here, which is just, ooh, that is great. It's really going to help us. So here, we get 16 and another 16% alt gauge on Diablo. Perfect. We can use another Benny Maru convert, and that's all we can do. Except we need to use the Shuna buff next turn. Otherwise, we're not going to have enough points to full nuke on turn 5. So we need to have another fairly decent hand. Which, because everyone's Tempest Elite, we're going to have. And we get a literal fuck ton of Diablo orbs. So we do need to use his Lord's Ambition skill again to get around the seal and the attack debuff for next turn, but we now have enough points for that. So another alt gauge gets us the EX alt. So we could have taken him out here, but we wouldn't then be able to convert because he's Tempest Elite. So we'll orb change, we will Lord's Ambition, and we will put the pierce rate and pierce power on, and then we'll bring Glenda in to alt swap away. So we get five Diablo orbs right here. And if we didn't have a ZX alt already, we would probably get it now. 
And with this, we are going to have just barely enough points to use all of the other buffs that we need to make this Diablo really, really hit. It's just turn 5, no one gets protection gauge from any trait whatsoever on turn 5, so we're not going to cover that last little bit to get another stack, which is unfortunate, but eh, it is what it is. So here is the, I'm just doing math right here, we are 4 points over what we need. So this is the guaranteed synergy and the 20% physical resistance down, and then Shinsha comes in, and we'll use the alt buff, the physical buff and alt resistance down, and then Diablo's big time attack and synergy power buff. And one more stack of Renard, and now we can nuke. And this is probably going to be the second highest damage I do in an alt. This is going to be the second highest team that we do in this video. And he does 4.3 million damage right there, which, you know, is not the 300,000, 383 something that I have for my top score, but we're running a physical team that's stacking, and it somehow still worked out. So if you are able to run this team, and if you have a 36% fucking Dark Claw, um, you might be able to replicate this, but most people probably won't, but it is an option, and it is one of the only other characters with Lord's Ambition in his kit to get around that, that skill seal. Alright, the next team down is gonna be an Exalted Champion Belzard team with Dark Shinsha, Dark Milim. We do have the new Isis in Kyoko here. <laughs> Uh, assuming maybe you got lucky in your 100 free tickets and you were able to pull both of them, in which case, congratulations. But if you didn't, well, then you gotta you gotta swap somebody out. But Velzard's given the element buff, which we don't need Shinsha's buff anymore for, which she's gonna be sealed anyways, because we no longer have the Lord's Ambition from the Protector, so we have no way to get around that. Milam and her are both single-target dark magic, though, so this will work fine. Isis has her own buffs, and the Drago, Kyoko, has his buffs as well, technically. And then Veldora has the green buff, and he's going to be kind of necessary. We just don't have a way to convert turn one here. Well, actually, no, we do. We have Milam. This is a green hand. Haha, <laughs> never mind. So, turn one, we do have Milam, so we can convert this very nice and easy. And then we'll bring Shinsha in... Uh, just because we need the dark damage and everything like that. And then we'll bring Kyokyo in for more dark damage. And he does do more than our than my Dark Milim, strangely enough, even though Milim is 120. I, I guess he's an unbound 104, so I guess that will offset that. And she's an old, old 5-star. But Velzard's going to change everything to greens, so we'll use the Vitalization skill to give us additional passive alt gauge, which is cool, and then he's going to go away. We don't really need his alt for anything. He's an AoE. None of these units are antagonist except him and Isis, who are not the primary nukers of this fight. So his alt support effect is not very useful here. He just happens to get a little bit extra damage, especially when he's in his unbound status. And now we're doing 15k a hit. We've got a lot of alt gauge because these characters are not EX units. And then we're going to get even more from the vitalization there we go 25 percent on top and now the unbound status comes in for both isis and kyokyo and uh, yeah now we're just going to send them away so let's use the drago buff on our two primary dark nukers before she goes that means that whoever is up in the back isis does not have to buff them because the drago effect is up and we just use her debuff effect and then send her away without risking losing something so here, we've got a lot of Kyoko orbs. We did the vitalization with him early because I wanted to apply it then, and it would hold. And now we're going to get it for the rest of the fight, essentially, which will help us get his EX alt, which is just additional damage, since he is now in his unbound status. So 40k, nice purple letters right there, purple numbers. There's the 80-point seal, which does hit Shinsha in the back, but we can't go to turn 8. So her buff is always going to be 50%, which we're already getting from Belzard. So it's not that big of a deal. We do get a natural hand of greens, which we use to convert anyway because I want to. And then we're going to send this because the vitalization is going to cover that last little remaining bit of alt gauge on Kyokyo and give him his EX alt, which still, again, doesn't matter because he doesn't even get any extra damage on his EX alt. So it's going to do peanuts, essentially, compared to the other two. So here, we'll bring Milam in. We got to use the debuff from Isis, but it's purely a debuff, so she can go away now with no real bad things happening. The only bad thing is that Kyoko doesn't have the Drago buff, which not a big deal. So we'll use the 
element or the we'll use the alt buff from Milam and we'll use what else did we use there? The buff skill from Kyoko. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll send him first. He does 335k. And then Shinsha does one million. And then Milam does 800, or yeah, Milam does 848. And the reason that is is because I'm talking out my ass. And Dark Shinsha is on Antagonist. So she is getting that extra little bit of weakness strike from Kyokyo's alt. So that's why she did a little bit more than Milam. I was confused at first myself when I saw that. And then I had to go look and uh, Shinsha is on Antagonist. That Shinsha is not like some of the other Shinshas. Like, New Year's Blessing Shinsha is not on Antagonist. This one is, and the new new Shinsha is, but, like, Wielder of Magic Shinsha is also not. But there's the Exalted Champion team. Let's move on. Okay. Dark Veldora. First anniversary Dark Veldora, who came out with Milam and Shinsha, who are once again making an appearance because they are from a very limited stock of single-target Dark Magic characters. Um, we've... Uh, Milam's got her convert for turn one. We're going to bring Nabe for her convert, and then Veldora for his green buff again. Shinsha for the side damage, and then we've got Idol Shuna for her synergy buff. 55 points. We can use synergy in this fight, and she has an alt swap skill, so this will work out fairly well. And we're actually going to make use of Shinsha's 80 point skill on turn three because we're going to get sealed and we're not no longer getting it from the protector we're getting magic attack from veldora so that's just another buff so we're gonna have alt some dark attack if she's skill fused we're gonna have synergy we're gonna have or well attack buff dark attack from shinja synergy from shuna and you know we'll do okay damage here turn one again we'll use the orb change with milim I guess if you wanted to move the slots around and put Veldora in slot 2 instead of Nabe, you could use his orb change because it hits Exalted Champions and Dark Milam is also on Exalted Champions. That could be an option if you want to do that and you don't want to use Milam's Convert turn 1. It doesn't really matter though. Veldora's going to reset her anyways, so it's not like that big of a deal. But, I mean, we just need to get ults. We need to get ults quickly for both Shinsha and Milam here because we want to use her 80 point skill early and then send her away we're really banking on that so we need like two orbs plus the three for milim it needs to be like a three two spread of shinshin milim like they can't have one orb that's not gonna do it so we'll do a convert here just for funsy onesies because we need to use skills to stack up veldora's magic buff so we're gonna use as much as possible and then the green buff boom and then we've reset milim's orb chain so we can cover that last orange orb and then we'll send this, and this is enough to get both alts for our dark characters so we can use the dark buff next turn and send them away. And then it's just two more turns of not having them up front. So 145 points. You do have to get kind of lucky here where you have enough to use the 80 point skill and still get a full hand of greens. So that's going to be, I think, your biggest RNG for this team is making sure you can still full convert this hand, which thankfully we are. And actually we had enough points to also use the extra skill points from Shinsha, but uh, I'm bad at math, so I didn't do it. <laughs> so we're going to use Nabe's convert to handle those two, and then Veldora converts his own orbs, and there's the full hand of green. As you can see, we have 15 points left over, so we could have used Shinsha. Oh well, I don't think it really makes a difference in the grand scheme of things. We're going to have more points than necessary when we're actually ready to nuke. So 12,000 damage. All right, whatever. This hand is lucky, mm, kind of. Yeah, kind of. It's got a Veldora orb, so we can use the green buff again. We'll use the alt swap just to send full hands of greens to get maximum skills so we can get Veldora buffed up fully, which he is. he only needs two more skills to get capped out at that 70% magic buff which we're going to do next turn, because we're going to use the alt buff and some orb changes and the synergy buff. So there's already two skills guaranteed for damage by itself. Okay, we've got an EX alt for, uh, for Nabe. Congratulations. There's the attack nerf, which we've protected Milam and Shinsha against. So we're just going to need to make sure who's coming in. Shuna doesn't have any orbs, plus she's our support, so she doesn't need to be swapped out anyways. So let's convert there. We'll bring Milam in. And then we will use Veldora's Convert here, hit those two orbs, and then when he comes out, he'll pull in that blue orb, which we can then swap with Milam. 
And already we're going to use all the skills that we need to get buffed up. So 160, so uh, buff and buff. And I, I guess buff, because, I mean, we do have enough points for it. Again, like, we didn't need to use the Shinsha skill last turn, because obviously we have plenty. Um, but here, boom, one more skill, 25 points, full hand of greens, full buffs going on. And then we'll go ahead and nuke Shinsha, 334, <laughs> Milim, 360. And we are barely able to cross the 1 million barrier with this team. So it's an option. If you don't have Shuna and you just have old five stars, then bring someone else that's going to buff, maybe like an attack buff. But um, yeah, there's that for you. Okay, we're going to scrape bottom of the barrel. Uh, protector Cabby, who if he ever got like a skill fusion and got upgraded, he would probably be one of the best protectors in the game. If you've never used Cabby before and you're like, what the fuck is this giant blue shark doing? He gives greens a hundred and... 50% gauge to everything. Skill points, alt gauge, protection gauge. You pretty much, you activate Cabby, you get one hand of greens, and you never have to worry again. And he's raising your skill cap by 40 points. So, we're going to bring just a bunch of dark characters and orb changers. Milum, again here. Free to play Aaron, free to play Trya. We've got old, the very first meta unit ever, Dark Veldora. And then his equivalent that came out for the half anniversary, Dark 2.0 Veldora. <laughs> we're just going to overwhelm and try and get three Dark Nukes, and we're going to send them pretty much every single turn. Turn one, you could use Milim, or you could use Trya, since she's got a special convert as well. Like, it, it really doesn't matter. You could use either or, but we're going to use Milim here, and then we'll just bring in all of our Dark characters. We don't need Veldora or Isis to do a green buff, because no one gives 150% that outclasses Cabby. So one, two, three, four, five, and six... The old, old Dark Veldora is physical, so he's going to be a little bit weaker. But now, like as long as we have the ability to orb change, which we do, thankfully. We just use both special converts for Milim and Trya. So we'll take physical Veldora out, because he's not as... Uh, physical Diablo out, because he's not as good. And then we'll use Cabby. We'll bring Eren in so we can keep Trya in the back to maximize her orb changing. And now, just look at the gauge that we get off of this. Like, look, look at that shit. 190 points, almost a double cabbie, almost an EX alt for both Milim and Diablo. And now you just start throwing ults out the window. And you, you don't really worry about anything else here. So we'll bring Trya in for Eren. We'll use probably both of her converts, because she can convert her own orbs, and then that one remaining orb. We'll use Milim's alt buff, because it's skill fees, also gives attack to dark allies, which we have two dark allies here. Maybe I could have waited and brought Diablo in for that, but he has his own dark attack for 30%, so he's going to match it anyways. Or, no, he's he's got 5% more, so it didn't really matter. But here, alright, Diablo, 64k. Ooh. Milim, 74k. Ooh. Uh, 9,000 damage on that. <laughs> I'm trying to give you guys options, okay? Obviously, there are better teams than this, but if you if you don't have it and you pulled him off some of the random singles or random multis uh, that you had for the Isis and Kyoko banner, then this is the best option you got. <laughs> Maybe you don't have Try or Aaron, but hey, was you gotta do something about this, right? All right, convert, convert. Uh, we'll use another alt buff here. What what are we gonna do here? All right, we're going to save that. Okay. We're send this. We're going to get another alt for Milim. I probably could have used her buff here as well and not really felt too bad about it, but we didn't. So we missed out on a little bit of damage. Not a big deal. We've got our alt back anyways and a super counter while we're at it. So that's cool. There's the attack nerf. Okay. Oh, well. Uh, we'll be able to offset that with our alt buff. And then we'll bring Diablo who has an alt and we'll bring the other Diablo who has his alt as well. We'll convert with Trya to change that one green. Perfect. And then we'll bring everybody in, and we'll full buff on this uh, turn. So Milim's alt buff, the Magic Diablo's personal alt buff, which is 80%, so it's 10% more than what Milim is giving, but it's only for him. And then we also use his counter attack rate, if he ever gets hit, but uh, shock surprise, he doesn't. And there's also no follow-up, and we can't counter an alt, so... Uh, we do under 600,000 damage here. Under 600,000. 555. Five. How unfortunate. But if that's what you got, it's what you got. Have at it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of the world. 
uh, let's try some funnier teams now. Okay, so in this fight, blues are not nerfed. So we're going to use a few of the EX blue burst teams. And uh, yeah, we'll try and get the job done. It's not great, but it's something. So we've got the Summer Memories team, which is a dark physical focus team. The trainee is giving extra damage against light enemies, which this Benny Mario is light, so we'll do a little bit extra here and there. But Dark Millum, shock surprise, she's here again. Second anniversary Hinata for the element buff. Summer Lumi for the alt buff, which is going to be if you use uh, five uses of trainee, which we don't do, you can get up to 100% alt, which is higher than what Millum is doing. And then Summer Hinata is single target, and she's dark, so she's going to do our best damage here. But we can't use her first skill because that gives her crit and we don't want to crit this fight. And then we're going to bring Tempest Sleep Benny Mario because he's buffing physical attack and alt resistance down. So he's just going to help our Hinata do more damage while also being another dark single target character. Man, Milim is really so versatile. She's two years old and she's still really good. She's old. She's really old. And her damage output is not great, but... Uh, she she is here, so I almost forgot to use her attacks, her orb change right there. But let's go ahead and bring Hinata in. I'm not worried about trying to steal orbs with her. Like if we do get three orbs of her for next turn, great, because we do need uh, to use Trainee, and she doesn't really kick in. Her benefits don't kick in until turn three, as long as you get uses of her. But thankfully, we do get three or, or three orbs for Hinata, so we can make work with that. So let's use the Enamor effect, which gives blues extra 100% extra damage, or 60%. I think it's 60. Uh, but Steel, we'll use Benny Mars Convert, so the blues give 30% extra gauge, and then we can send this, and it takes away one of the nerfed oranges. And now every orb in the future at this point going forward is going to be blue, because we're guaranteed that from Protector Training. And we're doing 47k a hit. I mean, that's pretty good. And unfortunately... We don't get an e we don't get any orbs for Hinata here, but the enamor effect is still active. So we're actually going to get the Hinata EX alt this next coming turn, even though we're gonna send literally no orbs for her. So let's use I mean we could have stolen a few orbs again and guaranteed it. I definitely could have done that, but I wanted to keep our points up. So we'll just send these orbs and get Lumi her alt as well. She is getting the extra damage against light enemies because she's part of the Summer Memories Force. There's the 80 point seal, which doesn't matter because we don't have any 80 point units. There's the Enamor effect giving Hinata the alt. So that's why we brought the other Hinata in so we can give the element buff to everybody. And then we'll use the Enamor effect again just to make sure that our blues do extra damage. We'll use Trainee now. That way, when we swap out Lumi and Hinata, the incoming orbs are also going to be guaranteed blues. So make sure to do that prior to swapping instead of afterwards, because that will protect you. Benny Maru comes in. We're not going to get an alt for him. He has no orbs. It's kind of unfortunate. I wish uh, I had brought him in for Milim instead of Milim. That way, he would have had an alt. Uh, but now we're ready to go. This is the final turn. There's the attack nerf, which doesn't really matter to our units in the back. Lumi is AoE, so she's not going to do as much damage, and she's fire, so she doesn't have type advantage either. But let's bring... Uh, what, what are we going to do here? Let's bring Hinata in for Hinata, because we already use the element buff. We have enough points to where we can use the alt buff with Milim to give Hinata the extra 25% attack, and then send her away. And then after we use this trainee, we'll be up to 90% alt damage for Summer Lumi, so it's still more than what the Dark Hinata is get or Dark Millum is giving, and it affects all these characters up front. So, Summer Lumi, Hinata buff, Hinata alt, and then we'll send this. Summer Lumi does 120k, not great. Hinata does 648, respectable for what kind of team this is, and then her 200% orb is 129k, so she does as much as Lumi's alt did. So 1.3 million right there. So definitely not the worst thing in the world. It's better than some of the other teams I showed, but it it requires almost a full EX team. And if you don't have Benny Mario, you just swap him in for maybe like, well, you can't do Fountain Wisdom Rimuru because he's 80 points. So you're gonna have to find a substitute for that. Maybe another attack buff or something for like Light Millum or 
uh, the synergy buff from Idol Shuna. I, I, I don't know. Something that you got to have access to that isn't already being done on this team. And the final team of the video, Tempest Elite. Solely because it has Dark Benny Mario on it. Like, this is his actual team. So we've got Protector Trainee, again, but a different trainee this time. She's giving the fire follow-up orbs, which isn't super great, but she's also giving our highest attacking character a 100% alt gauge for free, essentially. So we've got Tempest Elite Rimuru, who has the burn effect, greater burn. We're going to give him an alt, and then we're going to give Benny Mario an EX alt, and hopefully we'll make this work. We've brought Wind Lumi for our turn one convert, because I got tired of using uh, Milum. And then we brought Free to Play Gobta and Tempest Elite Shuna. So we've got the full Tempest Elite meta here. Whether or not that's actually viable for you is a different story, but we're going to show it. Turn one, use the convert. It, you, I mean, you could bring Milum if you have her. You could bring Trya if you have her. I just brought Lumi, because why not? I wanted to use Lumi. So here, full hand of greens, we'll bring in Rimuru, we'll bring in Benny Maru for Lumi, we'll send the six. Shuna has a 30% pierce power and pierce rate buff for three turns, so we can definitely activate that. And then she has a full hand convert to blues if everyone is Tempest Elite, which everyone except Lumi is Tempest Elite here. So convert, full hand right there. Here's the trainee, and that's a free 100% alt gauge for Rimuru, which is good. Unfortunately, the three Reamer Orbs do not get him as EX alt here. I would have kind of liked that. That way we could send him away and start giving Benny Mario an alt, but eh. Oh well. We're going to save the Pierce Power buff for next turn, because I want it to be active for the entirety of the fight on Shuna, not just... Because if we use it now, it's not going to be there on turn five. So we're going to hold it for now. So boom, Pierce buff. And we have to use Trainee to give Rimuru that extra little bit to send him away now, so we can retain that Pierce power buff. And Gobta will come in, and we could use the uh, Shuna convert again. If it had been a blue, we could have just used Gobta's convert, and that would have been cool. But we literally get no Benny Mara orbs for this entire fucking fight. But it doesn't matter, because he has the next highest attack stat now that Rimuru's off the field. So he's going to get the guaranteed alt gauges here. Which is really good, because otherwise it would not happen. There were two hands straight of no Benny Mario orbs whatsoever. So Shuna had an alt, we used the gob to alt swap, we used her full hand convert again. That was only for her essentially. But two trainees means fire follow up orbs. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take Benny Mario out, because he has no orb. And we'll use Rimuru's burn effect here, which will put a stack of burn on and then we can uh, leave him up front. That way he has a guaranteed spot for his alt. And the Pierce power is still active on him. We haven't stored anything else. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the burn does 9,500 damage. Like, that's terrible. But what I should have done probably is I should have swapped Rimuru out for Lumi. So that way we wouldn't get hit with that attack nerf. So if you're going to try and run this team, just do that. And now, physical buff, the Rimuru... A, uh, attack and alt buff and then another stack of the burn so now we're going to have a 60% burn going on instead of 30 and we're going to have a single target fire alt that's going to be buffed pretty heavily unfortunately we don't have the points to use a full hand convert but it's all Shuna orbs like Shuna has gotten literally almost every single orb for the past three turns she's a greedy motherfucker but we're going to take out one of those nerfed oranges so here Shuna's alt does a magical 34k. <laughs> Benny Mario being dark single target, 154k. And then Rimuru with his personal buffs does 356,000. And then hit, hit, and hit. Would have been a lot better if it was Rimuru orbs. And then the follow up, 7,000, 21,000, 71,000. And the burn does 280 something thousand damage. So that puts us over a million damage with the Tempest Elite team as well, which is not a good team. And I hope people really didn't summon for it, but maybe you pulled them off of other banners or something. But there we go, guys. There's my video for Boss Battle 2. I understand it's really rough. New players are going to be like, bro, what the fuck? I can't use any of this. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Jubilee's not meant for new players. It's kind of the point. But hopefully you guys got something out of this video. If you have other teams that you found that works, please let me know in the comments so other people can see that. But that's it for me. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.